agriculture, a bright new star in the world's food and fiber industry, a performer with a relatively short track record, yet one marked in recent years by phenomenal growth. Historically, aquaculture activities in the last 10 years have been explosive in the continental United States. We've experienced a growth from $39 million of sales in 1978 to $250 million of sales in 1988. Um, projections of sales in the continental United States will go up to $2 billion worth of sales in the next 20 years. And in arid regions of the world where irrigation and agriculture go hand in hand, aquaculture offers unique advantages. The chance to benefit from multiple use of water, the desert's most precious natural resource. In arid regions, any form of agriculture is a matter of water management. If you are going to grow anything, you have to maximize how you use that water. Aquaculture is one of those techniques of maximizing water use. Here we are able to get a double, a minimum of a double use of the water. Uh, the fish put, the fish waste become an excellent fertilizer for any crop that, that is found below the, uh, the fish. Fish don't care or have less of a care of the salinity. If the water, if this was seawater, you could grow tilapia or striped bass in it. Therefore, in areas where water is of marginal quality, you can still have an economically viable crop based on water use, let alone any salt-tolerant plants that you may use underneath the, uh, the fish. All in all, it works out to, a, to far superior economics in any cropping system. Located as it is in the Sonoran Desert, it was a natural for the Maricopa Agricultural Center to focus research and extension work on this explosive new growth industry, to capitalize on agricultural resources already in place. In Arizona in particular, we have a lot of canal systems, so we're really exploiting the essential systems that are already built for a desert system. A lot of people ask, of course, why are we doing fish farming in Arizona? Well, we already have the canals here. We don't have to really build raceways, as you see in the foreground. We have to griddle them off and stock them. U of A and Big Mac Center is, is in the forefront of designing this. Hundreds of miles of existent irrigation ditches offer one distinct advantage to desert aquaculture. Extension specialist George Brooks is experimenting with another. His inexpensive, low-input, high-efficiency system uses small ponds in conjunction with irrigation ditches. For convenience and ease of operation, the fish are grown within cages suspended in the ponds. These cages give us a number of advantages. They allow us to feed the fish easily, to check on their health with, with few problems, and most importantly, to harvest them extremely quickly. It takes take one or two men to harvest 5,000 pounds of fish in an hour. We don't have to chase around the pond with a net or any other device. They're all in one location. In addition, for one of our more interesting crops, the tilapia, um, it prevents tilapia from breeding. That's one of the major issues that they will breed and not grow to market size. In a cage, off the bottom, they cannot breed, so they grow instead. The water continues past the fish, and it goes back out into an irrigation canal, but only part of it. 400 gallons of water per minute is pumped back into the second half of the uh, system. This system is basically, a, a, this side is basically a large filter. This filter takes all of the fish waste out, it takes um, the particulate matter out so that the, the fish water is returned to the fish cleaned up, or at least partially cleaned up. In this way, we can stretch out the amount of fish that we can grow per any given amount of water. And if we were to simply put fish into a canal with no filtration, no recycling, we can grow perhaps 33 pounds of fish for every gallon of water that passes by the fish. In a system such as this, 
we can grow a minimum of 100 pounds of fish for every gallon of new water, perhaps more. We'll know more as we continue to experiment with this system. Just how many fish and of what species can be grown in a given volume of water? To commercial growers, there is perhaps no more vital question than this to making a profit. That's why density studies are so important here at the Maricopa Agricultural Center. I measure the amount of feed, which is 3% of the body mass, and I give this feed regularly to the fish for three months. We want to see in, in about three months how much the fish grow, what weightage do they gain with these kinds of temperatures. As you know, it's very unique for the whole place. With the temperatures and our water conditions, what is the maximum density you get per unit area? Uh, and that's, that's basically one part of my research. Water quality and monitoring is, is another part of my research. What are oxygen levels? Are they suitable for maximum growth of catfish? What about pH levels? And I monitor everything regularly so far. We have pretty good conditions of water. Water conditions are excellent, actually. Stocking densities, rates of biomass conversion, flow rates, growth rates, aeration requirements are but a few of the practical questions under scrutiny here at the Maricopa Agricultural Center. But in most agriculture, there are almost as many types of fish to be grown as there are crops in agriculture. Therefore, Research here is also interested in multiple use of water with various species and how each performs in an arid environment. We're looking at first use water being catfish fingerlings or fries in nursery and then second use water for uh, fingerlings or food fish, catfish. Third use water for tilapia, tilapia being a species that has a lot of relevance in Arizona, especially during the summer months. It can stand very low water qualities and produce very high volumes of biomass. So in the weir and the canal systems, which you see behind me and see at Big Mac, they could be baffled off three or four times. So we could use the water several times over with a little mechanical aeration. We have very extreme temperatures, which means very rapid growth for fish. So we're also looking at the nutritional needs of the fish, complex protein, carbohydrates being the main ratio of feed manipulation. So overall, we're looking at several aspects, the disease, the health, the nutrition, and the densities of grow out, and how that works for commercial industry to make it quite viable and productive. An essential part of keeping aquaculture viable and productive is the ability to analyze problems when things go wrong. Here at the Maricopa Agricultural Center, veterinary scientists can literally examine such problems microscopically to find solutions. What we're uh, capable of doing uh, on, a, on a daily basis here is the gross pathology, in other words, the autopsy of, of the dead fish, and also the microscopic uh, pathology uh, of, the, uh, of the lesions that we find. If we have need for virus or bacterial uh, isolation work, we send uh, uh, fresh tissues down to Tucson, to the university, to uh, one of the laboratories there that's equipped and, and set up for uh, uh, aquaculture type microbiology. We also can utilize the toxicologic services in the university in the diagnostic lab. So we're able to cover most of the areas of disease that we'll encounter in uh, routine aquaculture. Multiple use of such a precious resource in the desert as water is the key to successful aquaculture in arid environments. Properly used, in addition to making money on its own, 
a successful aquacultural operation can literally subsidize a grower's other agricultural operations. If a farmer was to grow, say, 10,000 pounds of fish on, on his property in his irrigation water, and if those 10,000 pounds of fish were to use, let's say, 70, 70 acre feet of water, the profits from those fish would actually pay for that 70 acre feet of water. That means that any other use that farmer may have for that water, such as irrigating his cotton crop, that water on that cotton would be essentially free. Grower Gary John, who works closely with the Maricopa Agricultural Center, offers proof that the multiple use of water approach pays off in the real world. And of course, whatever we pump into the raceways flows out over an overflow, which we then take to our ponds, other fish, back to the ditch, and then this year we have 100 acres of cotton below our fish. And we feel that we have done real good. There's still a lot of uh, technology that we're interested in gaining, especially in the aeration and in the flow and the water quality that to bring us up to speed. And so with the university involved, it helps us meet our goals. And so we feel like, I guess where there's water, there should be fish. Throughout the world, as we struggle under the burden of exploding population, particularly in developing countries. The challenge is to provide adequate food resources. And it is aquaculture which holds enormous promise for developing nations, many of which are found in arid regions. Aquaculture has great potential for semi-arid regions of the world, and especially developing countries in Africa, India, and Southeast Asia. And I think that is where the future lies. I think the U of A has a very unique opportunity to have a leadership role in helping these countries develop their own potential. I see the aquaculture industry not only going beyond two million or billion dollars in sales in the United States, I see really the aquaculture industry being the industry of production for vegetation as well as protein. Uh, there is really no comparison in terms of growth. It is a more primitive system as our understanding of the science art of growing fish and aquatic husbandry of plants develops. I see aquaculture as being really the future for producing foods for mankind.